step by step, it's being transformed into a psychedelic lounge. Over the last 12 months, patients with severe drug-resistant depression have been brought into this room and given a strong and illegal hallucinogenic, psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms. In charge of this radical new drug trial is scientist Robin Carhart-Harris. So the room has been transformed yeah. from a bog standard hospital room into something a bit more cozy. Why, why do you do this? We're trying to provide a setting that is supportive, that's warm, that's nurturing, where the patient can feel safe and supported and, and free and, and able to open up really. This is one of a number of recent trials reviving some of the most controversial psychiatric research of the 1950s and 60s. After receiving a small dose of LSD, they're confused and undisciplined. Around 40,000 patients worldwide were treated with psychedelics for everything from alcoholism to schizophrenia. That all stopped when governments around the world began to ban recreational drugs. Half a century later, and doctors are tentatively picking up this research, with around a dozen trials now worldwide beginning to explore medical uses of psychedelics. Andrew Thayer was one of 20 patients on the trial. He's struggled with depression for two decades. It's hard to describe it, the hopelessness that you feel when you're depressed. I got to a point last November where I'd pretty much given up. You know, I thought, I just can't, can't do this anymore. He found out about the trial online and applied. To his surprise, he was accepted. That's how, three months ago, he found himself in a hospital room in West London being given a Class A psychedelic drug. And the environment, you know, it's completely as you want it. So if at any point you just decide that you don't want the music, that's fine, we'll turn it off, or, you know, we just, it's whatever you feel is comfortable for you. Okay. Ros Watts is a clinical psychologist who helped guide patients through the experience. I was surprised at the level of his suffering because when we met him he was such a charming, kind of so sensitive as well to other people's needs and so great at conversation that it was difficult to see the suffering at first. But we did see it in the, the dosing days that we realised how much he'd been struggling against. Andy, yeah. how are you feeling? It's been half an hour. Okay, yes, yeah, uh, something's happening. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, it started out not, not nice, it was it felt as though something was on my chest. It started off fairly pleasantly, but it soon got pretty dark. And I described it as a as a black tide coming in. Often with psychedelics, emotions and difficult experiences that have been repressed because they're so uncomfortable and painful come to the surface. And that can be very healthy and very positive in terms of change because avoidance of difficult emotion is really at the heart of many mental health difficulties. Try having a look, opening your eyes very gradually and try just looking at the rose. I was feeling, still feeling a wee bit woozy. Roz said, um, said uh, just, just concentrate on this rose and she picked up a rose from the vase. This rose had taken on a, I don't know, a life of its own and, and was definitely trying to communicate that yeah, everything's fine, everything's beautiful. It's worth saying that patients had a variety of different experiences and Andy's was darker than most. It was unclear at the time what long-term effects these trips would have. Today, scientists published their results in The Lancet. So these are the results from the study so far. Um, 20 patients now. Uh, this is a measure of the severity of patients' depression. You can see one week post-treatment, you can see that virtually every patient shows some decrease in their depressive symptoms. But the results do look much more mixed once you get past one week. When you go back to the three months, there are sort of patients that are kind of not doing quite That's so right. well. That's right, and so we are seeing signs of relapse in some of the patients. Um, that's quite common in depression, particularly treatment-resistant depression. It tells us really that this isn't a magic cure. Even so, if we were to take average scores even up to three months and six months post-treatment, 
there's, there's really quite a highly significant decrease in depressive symptoms at those time points. The researchers believe that psilocybin increases the connectivity of parts of the brain. It's speculated that in depression, the brain gets stuck into repetitive negative patterns of thinking. So if we can introduce a kind of flexibility into the mind and into the brain, then perhaps that could help us shift an individual out of that rut that they've, they've become stuck in. The problem is, at this stage, this is only a theory and the study itself is not without its difficulties. There is an ethical issue here, isn't there, of taking people who are very severely depressed, taking them off antidepressants, giving them a class A drug, and then not giving them the therapy that they might need afterwards. Uh, if they decide to come off their medication, then that's something that we do with close monitoring. We stay in contact with their uh, mental health practitioner or GP. And I, th I think people should consider that if ever they think you know, I want to go out and, and find some magic mushrooms and I have to come off my antidepressant medication. I think to do that is quite dangerous and in the context of this trial, the way we did it was with some very careful monitoring. Three months after Andy's trial and he's still coming to terms with what he went through. I think what I'm experiencing are aftershocks, you know, because even now, you know, I'll have good days and bad days, but some of the good days are outnumbering the bad days and I'm off antidepressants, you know, and I wouldn't have thought that was possible. On the whole, I think, it's moved me into a different direction. You know, it's kicked me out of the rut, as it were. Andy believes psilocybin has benefited him, but the trial by clinical standards is tiny, and the researchers admit that much more evidence is needed before they can be sure of what the effects of the drug are. Another larger trial is planned, but this kind of research takes time. It's unlikely then that your local GP will be able to prescribe psilocybin anytime soon.